Because that does, or whether or whatever goat you're using for showmanship, you want that goat to walk smoothly with you, and that's practice at home. Okay, Miss Jackie, what would you like me? Something that you would like uh, that I did not do right. I think just the main thing is how the doe actually walks whenever she comes in the ring. Like 
when you're in showmanship, you can't rely on like your ring stewards or the person in front of or the person in back of you to ask you to help. Now, if you're in a class setting, then sure, your ring stewards will help or the person behind you, you know, will give it a boost or whatever. But when you're in showmanship, you, you're pretty well on your own because the judge is actually watching what, you know, abilities you have. So that's one thing that I definitely recommend is practice with them as far as walking to where they'll, they'll walk right into it and, you know, keep yeah. their stride up. Yeah. And if your goat is fighting you, you can readjust your chain. So always a prong chain. What I do is I grab it, take it to the end of their chin, and pull it back. That neck, you should not have a big, like it should not have a godly, it should not have a fat pocket above the chain. That chain needs to be directly underneath their chin. So if your goat's fighting you, you can readjust their chain, get them, tell them that you're the boss, get them in, get you in control and you can jerk you can jerk on their chain it's it's not a it's just a quick cut so does anybody have any questions that you personally that you would like to work on just that something that you know is a flaw of yours that it and it could be somebody else's and so yeah I would lightly help them, but don't go in front of them. Right. Don't, don't, just don't go around them and in front of them. Just but lightly help, help them. Help. Yes. And that's just grabbing at the tail and just lightly, and you can kiss to it and just that. Does anybody have any else, other questions? No? Okay. Thank you, Miss Madden. Yo, yeah, what's up, buddy? Huh? Why did you brush her? Okay, why did I brush her? So after they walk into the ring, their hair gets messed up. So on your comb, and whatever comb you use, you always want the teeth pointing in. You never want the teeth pointing out, because if you have a prongy comb, you could back into someone and stab them. So you always want your palms in. So when you're walking into class and you get your goat set up, you just take a few strokes and then you kiss their hair and follow and get your judge. And it's just making that goat look more appealing versus their hair all messed up. Okay, that's a really good question. Does anybody else have any? No? So that just depends on your age group. So if you're a, so the more advanced you go into that age group, the more advanced the questions are. And it just depends on that judge if they're gonna ask questions or the how many and for so. That's just an experience and just studying your anatomy. Anatomy is a lot of the good big questions. And so a lot of them can ask, tell me about your death. Miss Hannah, would you like a microphone? Yes, please. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> okay, so the judges, they're just going to ask different questions depending on that judge. So a lot of it can be anatomy questions. Uh, so I would really just uh, study your anatomy of your goat. And also the genetics, because that judge can say, okay, so tell me about your goat. So what I always done is I give them their registered name. So it would be the herd mark. So what I do is would be HMK1 root. So then we would go and say this is a 100% or a 50%. And then you would go, their dam is so-and-so and their sire is so-and-so. And then you can go into their birthday. So you would give them your birthday. And that's just studying that good that you're using. 
you want to know your dough inside and out. And that's also a lot of practice at home. So on the whole setup, when you walk into that ring, you want to keep a good practice of watching the judge and watching in front of you. You don't want your eye contact on that judge the whole time because if you're watching that judge and you're not watching that judge, the person in front of you, A, you can walk, run, run, and so So you want to keep a good distance. And so when you get into that spot, you want to allow yourself about five seconds to get your go out. Yes, it is a race. Yes, you know it is a race, but it's not. You want to be swiftly and easily when you set up that go. You don't want to be lightning fast. Because that go can be a scare and it, is, it just doesn't look pretty if you're being speed fast. Okay. So I want to work on transitioning in the front. So when you have that go front piece of that, So the judge is in front of you, and if they're switching on sides, this is how I do it. So you take your inner leg that's closest to your hip. So I want you guys to do this with me. So be level right behind, level with the ribs, right behind your chest. So you take your inner leg and you set out in front of your hip. So I want you guys to do this with me. Take your inner leg. Step it out in front of your hip. Then you take your outer leg and swing it all around. Okay? And then you take what's what because your inner leg is now your outer leg and swing it back. And while doing this, you're switching hands. So it's, it's swift, but it's and again you don't want to be super fast because you could scare me out and it just doesn't look pretty. Okay, so let's start out from the beginning. Go on the show, non-show side, the walking side. So it's a one, two, three. So it's a one, two, Three. It's a quick, easy motion. And it's not a race. It's not that race. You want to be swift, quick, and easy. Okay? And always keep that goat's head up. Don't let it fall down because it's not pretty. Keep that goat's head up at all times. So again, your inner leg is in front. Your outer leg swings around, and the other leg goes to the other side. Okay? Got any questions? Cool. So I always, when the judge is walking around the ring, I always keep the shoulders like an axe. So say the king right here, he's the judge. So my body is always facing the judge. My arm is not in the way of my body. My body is always facing to the judge. So can you guys, if you would find me. So the shoulders are at axle point. So I'm continually falling. So my body is always continually based on that shoulder. Okay? So sir, if you like to switch on the other side, so I'm like this. And let me stop. So the biggest, one of the biggest pet peeves is some judges when they switch sides and they're switching right in front of your yoke. That is not when you want to switch sides. Because if that judge is right in front of your yoke, they can't see the front of your goat, and that's the biggest purpose of them going and moving the front of your goat. So you want to wait to the very first second that 
that they're directly in front of you. That is when you want to switch sides. Not when they're in front of your go. Because they're blocking your view of your go. Okay? So I also get a lot of questions about how do you... So what I like to do is if that judge is out of the bar, sometimes I like to get down and kind of play with their tongue. So I do not necessarily, it's called, I call it tickling, but I don't, don't tick myself. So what I do is I just take, so my hands like this, I just take my middle finger and I find their navel, which is the belly, that they're going to be the belly button. I, I just push right at the bank. So I'm down. And this is only when the judge is far away. You don't want to do this when the judge is on top. It just, it's not great. No. So, and when you do this, you have to keep that head. You always have to keep that head up. So the way I come up with my chain, the closer you get to the head, the more control you have versus if you were out here. So I, I have my pinky, my ring finger, and my middle finger in the middle of the chain. And then I have the pointer finger out, and then I put the loop or the rub piece or whatever between my thumb and my pointer finger. And that's what I hold it up. So I'm down, keeping the head up, and then I go. But, and this is just going to take practice with your goat for them to get used to you playing with that. And all that just does is that just brings their gut out. So if they're a real sway back go doing that, it kind of levels out the top line. And plus, it makes them look cool. So you're showing your goat to the best of its ability. Does anybody have questions? I know this is kind of a big group. Please do not be afraid. There is no such thing as a stupid question. Please ask a question. You guys are, okay, what's up, buddy? What is that? I'm sorry, I was looking at it. Okay, so you can kind of do a circle. So, say your goat is acting up and you need to get it controlled. And you want to do a circle. So say I'm in line, but I need to do a circle. So first I readjust their chain, tell them to get control, tell them I'm the boss. So I go out, but you always want to make sure to know where your judge is. When you do them, so you just, Lead them out. And if your judge, say the camera guy's the judge, whenever you, it's just a switch sides. Because you always keep that goat between you and the judge. And then you just easily move back into the line. And then you just reset. <laughs> So, when I go into the line and I set up, when I go into place, I find my judge. When I pop my chest or set my front feet, I find my judge. When I go back, set my feet, when I come back up, I find my judge. When I go back down, set the other back foot, I find my judge. Home and stay. So 
you don't want to be bent over because this is not attractive. If you're, if you're hunched, if you're not confident, you want to stand tall. So there's a difference between being confident and being cocky. You do not have to be cocky. When you walk in, you want to have your back straight and turn you walk into a you don't want to walk into that class like you're Mr. J. Swag, because that's being happy. So, you want to be confident, but you want to be confident. You want to have good posture. So, a lot of the times I've had to just say that they were scared of me because my eye contact, they, they were scared of me because they thought I was going to feel that they were going to pick me up because my scare was so. Serious. Yes, you want to have a serious case, but you always want, you want to look like you're having fun. Because that's the whole purpose of this shooting day, is to have fun. So when I walk into class, I just have a new smile. It's not a, you don't know, want to have a rest of your jokes. That's, you want to have, you look like you're having fun. So it's just a new game. And then if you get stay on between you and two other people, then that's when everything is serious. And that's when you can have a serious face. Now, the rest So sometimes, depending on that goat, sometimes what I like to call is popping that chest. If you're a goat, they're, they should be naturally straight. So if you pop their chest, and what I mean is so when I pop their chest, so when I pop their chest, I grab the chain underneath and then I grab the horn and I literally lightly pick up. It's just a pop. It's just a pop. So what is that? What is that doing is their chest is actually swerved so with that. With popping them, that takes their feet out and sets them actually wide. But if you do this and their feet go far feet out, their skeleton, that's when you can grab it and move it. Either out wider if you need it, or if it went out too wide, you can bring it back in and get it closer. Is that
start to switch. So I go out, switch, while keeping eye contact with the judge and in front of you, and switch arms, and then go back into line. So what all you're kind of doing is you're just doing a figure eight. There are some people that I've seen that when that judge dismisses you, there's some people that have switched sides and then walked out and just went back and forth. That's just the way, with the figure eight, that's just the way that I've done in this world. As you being a judge, what's the difference between going out and switching versus switching sides and then going straight back and forth? So, just from my perspective, whenever, whenever I'm doing a showmanship, or even if I'm judging a show, I'm probably your non-typical judge, I would say. You know, the, the main thing that's important to me is, whenever you come in, get your boat set up, probably, like Anna said, five seconds or whatever. Now, I'm not a super big stickler on switching sides. I, I'm just, I come from a, another species. I respect you that do, but I'm not coordinated to do it. 
Uh, it's just unnatural for me. So therefore, I'm not super. I'm not super strict on that. Whether you switch sides, whatever. Um, just what I tell my kids. Whenever Hannah's working for me at home or whatever, the most important thing to me is always have that animal spot on from the time you walk in the ring to you walk out. I don't care how you gotta do it. Just do it. So and do it quickly. So that. Like I said, I'm probably not the best one for her to be asking that question to because I'm just not super strict on that. But, you know, whenever you do switch sides, just, you know, do it fluently. You know, practice at it at home, like she said. You know, do it in a couple of steps and just do it fluently and just do it quickly. And the more you practice it, the better you're going to get. Okay. Last question. Anybody on the outside? Questions? Questions? Any questions? All right. Thank you guys so much. And if you guys have any other questions, please come up. Don't be afraid to ask. Just come up. And even if you have any questions about your public speak or your sales talk, or you have questions about on school talk, please do not be afraid to ask. I am willing to give you my knowledge. All right. Thank you guys so much and good luck in the call.